Welcome everyone uh, to the FB live session today. Uh, thank you for joining me yet again. I'm Ranita, representing GeoLife Agritech India Private Limited as technical manager exports. And today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic. We are going to talk about immunity, which is now a very hot and happening topic these days because that is the only way where you can naturally restrict the infection, which is massive right now, uh, which is COVID-19. So how can we build this immunity? Uh, what kind of foods shall we eat so that we can build immunity? And is it only restricted to humans? How do plants build their immunity? Let's see and talk about those components which are responsible for building immunity in plants. Let me just share the screen. Okay, so I hope it's visible to all. So today my topic of discussion would be broad spectrum antioxidant against plant fungus. So let's see how these antioxidants work against plant fungus. So before understanding how they do it, let's see what they are. So what are antioxidants? What is its role? And why is it so important? Antioxidants are all those elements that have the function of eliminating free radicals from the plant body. Now, what are free radicals? Free radicals are unstable compounds produced as cellular oxidation in the plant system. Free radicals are dangerous. They alter the cell's DNA. They prevent cell renewal. They are also responsible for cell senescence, which is also called cell death. It also alters the normal metabolic activities of plants. Now, plants have an innate ability, which means an inbuilt ability to biosynthesize a wide range of non-enzymatic antioxidants, which are capable of renewating or restricting the dangerous ROS, which we call the reactive oxygen species. Now, these antioxidants significantly have the role to delay or prevent oxidation of oxidizable substrate. And there is a limited and controlled potential number of antioxidants which are beneficial to plant immune system as they are capable of eliminating these free radicals and pathogens. Coming to another interesting fact is uh, some of the food and the antioxidants that are present. So not only uh, like it is important for plants, antioxidants are important for human body as well. So if you see that it's also present, all these components are there in the science of Ayurveda. And also what do the doctors recommend us? You know, to build our immunity, they ask us to have carrots, garlic, lemon, tomatoes, walnuts, black grapes, broccoli, apple, turmeric, onions, green tea, and peppers. Now you must have heard that people recommend a lot of green tea, you know, to be healthy because it naturally flushes out all the toxins from your body. What does turmeric do? A very important and basic spice in Indian cooking, uh, which is called haldi. And that antioxidant or the active ingredient is called curcumin. It has natural uh, capacities to restrict viral infections. Then you have lemon or all the citrus elements, which now the doctors are providing to the COVID patients, vitamin C. What is that? It comes from the lemons and all the citrus fruits. So these are the natural antioxidants that we are having to keep ourselves healthy and to combat this COVID-19 situations. So let's understand what kind of antioxidants are there for plants and how they help to increase their immune system. Now, this is a very, very important slide I would like to share with you. Uh, this is also a paper, a research paper that has been published uh, in the University of South Korea. So they have studied on the potential of antioxidants. Now, if we just see the uh, slide, 
there are two basic kinds of stress we all know the biotic stress and the abiotic stress now the biotic stress of the those which is because of living organisms like bacteria fungus virus all these and abiotic stress are those which is because of non living things like climatic conditions for example uh, drought excessive rainfall frost due to alkalinity anything which is for the non living factors now these are the ones uh, which uh, make the plants in stress now what does stress lead to stress leads to the generation of ros which is the very dangerous free radical reactive oxygen species now what damage does this cause when there is stress these reactive oxygen species are generated in number one at the chloroplast of the plants and sometimes at the mitochondria of the plants now we all know that the mitochondria is what it's the powerhouse of the cell now powerhouse means there is where all the metabolic activities happen so if the ros is generated there it stops or inhibits the natural ongoing metabolic activity so what do we have to do we've got to stop this ros from happening now when the plants understand there is some oxidative damage happening when it happens in case of biotic stress for example if you take a leaf and there is some fungal infection so you can see the pores later on these pores penetrate and mature and they start multiplying now these when they start multiplying inside the plants what do they do they destroy the cell wall they destroy the metabolic activities they destroy the dna and the rna structure so the entire the process the physiology of the plant is is destroyed and then the symptoms appear so when a plant understand this the oxidative damage is has started to happen what does it do it kind of triggers two main defense systems one is the enzymatic antioxidant defense and one is the non enzymatic antioxidant defense system now this non enzymatic antioxidant defense system leads to three major kinds of antioxidant one is the low molecular weight antioxidant high molecular weight antioxidant and the potential antioxidants but research has shown that this potential antioxidant is the main one which can restrict the main ros so this potential antioxidant should be what kind and what kind of character should it have it should have the three main characters which is it should be a radical scavenger radical means free radicals now there are three types of free radicals one is the reactive oxygen species one is the reactive nitrogen species and another one is the reactive sulfur species so this potential antioxidant should have the character to scavenge to destroy to kill these three kind of free radicals next second is it has to be it should be a metal chelator which means there are some metal toxicity also happens in the plants so it should have the potential to also be a metal chelator then it should also act as a reducing agent which means that the ion transfer that takes place should be smooth the catalytic reaction that takes place should be smooth so this three essential character should be present for the best antioxidant now geolife and i'm proud to say that that geolife has identified discovered this potential antioxidant which has these three characters and it is called l methyl folate calcium this l methyl folate calcium is a derivative of folic acid we will get to know about this even later but this is the initial ones let's go to a another research so this is another interesting research which is from germany and uh, this is a role of antioxidants in drought resistance now this paper signifies that antioxidant not only scavenges the ros but it also has an amazing role in drought resistance as well so if you see this picture i will give you a brief of it uh, if you see the blue line this is the water availability so where the water is more the stress is less naturally now when the water availability is lowering down the stress level is increasing now if you see when the stress level increases the antioxidants are triggered and the antioxidants 
make certain changes in the cell molecules in certain components that uh, the plants have the ability to protect themselves against the drought. For example, the stress, when they are in the mild and the moderate stage, what happens? The antioxidant help in stomatal closure. It helps in the curling of the leaves and also it makes a waxy layer on the leaves. Now, what happens with these three things? The transpiration lowers. When the transpiration lowers, the water loss lowers. And when the water loss is lowers, there is, there is less carbon dioxide assimilation. Again, if you see further, when the stress conditions are severe to death, it makes the antioxidant makes more changes in the cells. It makes osmotic adjustments in amino acids like prolines, in sugars. It makes increased in root to shoot ratio. It makes certain cell wall modification. It makes reorganization of the entire metabolic system. And it also activates the antioxidant system so that the plant has the capacity to endure in these drought conditions. Now I'll talk a brief about disease cycle. We all know how diseases happen. Now, when a plant is heavily infected by a fungal disease, it naturally, it has a natural death. Then the debris and or the infected parts of the plant, these are then transmitted through soil, water, air to different other parts of the other pl uh, plants, which is uh, surrounding it. And this is how the disease transmit from one plants to another. And when the situation becomes favorable, which means when these pores are lying there and the environment is becomes humid, becomes uh, too much of uh, drought conditions occur, then is the time when these spores start maturing, start penetrating and start multiplying and cause all the oxidative um, stresses and leads to these symptoms that we understand as lesions, as other, uh, all the manifestation of the disease uh, we understand uh, in the plant. So this is how the disease cycle, and again, this cycle is repeated the same way. Now coming to a very interesting uh, thing here is the interrelation interrelation between the host, the environment, the pathogen. Now they're interconnected because the disease cannot happen if there is, there is no presence of host and you just have environment pathogen, there is no disease. If there is no favorable environment and the host and pathogen is there, then it's also no disease. For example, uh, we tend to catch cold and uh, sneezes, you know, uh, generally during winter. Why during winter? That is because uh, the microorganisms or the pathogen responsible for this cold and cough are already there surrounding us. Now, when the environment, when the temperature lowers down, the conditions become favorable for the pathogen. It creates a conducive environment where these plant pathogens, start, uh, these pathogen, normal pathogens start multiplying. And when they multiply, they attack the host, like host, which is us. And when we get attack, attacked, similar process goes through and then that and the scuff and cold is the symptoms so that's how uh, if there is not a favorable environment pathogens will not attack you again if there is no pathogen host and environment no question of disease so these three factors have to be equally favorable for the disease manifestation to occur so they are interrelated with each other now, what happens is whenever there is a disease, we've seen uh, farmers tend to put a lot of chemical fungicides. But what does chemical fungicides do? Out of these three factors, the chemical fungicide only and only affect the pathogen. So they are responsible only to restrict the fungus. They do not care about the host because chemical fungicides do contain toxic elements, which later on is harmful for the host. Then there are chemical fungicides also contain some toxic elements, which is again problematic to the environment, is harmful to the natural enemies. So it also is not looking after the environment. So what is the solution? The antioxidants. The antioxidants are the ones which affect the, which works on the host completely. And it makes it so strong. It builds the immune system to be such a way 
that pathogen cannot affect you directly at all. So if there is no pathogen attack, there is no growth of pathogen, there is no disease. Okay, and obviously since they are non-toxic because antioxidant, obviously they are non-toxic. So there is no effect on the environment. The plants can grow healthy, wealthy with all, uh, with all the nutrients. And if the plant is healthy, your yield is healthy. You get a better yield any day. So this is how the uh, antioxidants work. Another advantage of antioxidants it gives you a dual benefit, no doubt. It gives you protection. Uh, it gives you nutrition also because it helps to uh, absorb all the kind of nutrients that is for the plants. And of course, there are also, uh, there is a formulation that Geolife has um, built, which has all the essential nutrients the plant requires when they are in stress. And of course, you have the potential antioxidant which protects it. So therefore, there is the nutrition and the protection together to the plants. So what is that particular product that Geolife has created? Yes, it is the crop protection by nutrition product developed from nanotechnology called TREAT. It is a broad spectrum nutritional antioxidants that works against plant fungus. Now, this antioxidant has all the potential characters it should have. And plus, not only that, it also, this formulation also contains the most essential nutrients that is required to keep the plants healthy. Yes, so TREAT is an innovative and powerful antioxidant which works effectively on broad spectrum fungal diseases. It is made up of specialty nutrients and vitamin and bioactive metabolic form, which are easily available to plant cells. We'll get to know how it is easily available. It recovers the plant from micronutrient deficiency. Of course, if your formulation has essential nutrients, it will not have any micronutrient deficiency. Helps in root and shoot growth. 100% water soluble can be applied through foliar drenching drip. It has very, very low dosage. And of course, if the dosage is low, the cost is also effective. Coming to the benefits, antioxidant with, uh, with uh, nutrition helps in building immunity in plants against plant pathogen, uh, fungal pathogens. 100% biodegradable, very, very important. It can be used in preventive as well as curative. No residues and it's harmless to natural enemies. And it helps to combat against biotic and abiotic factors, which then again uh, leads us to disease manifestation. So we've always heard about this phrase, uh, prevention is better than cure. Antioxidants treat just as that. Now we come to the mode of action. Interesting, how treat works. Now chemical fungicide, like I told earlier, are toxic and they directly kill the fungus on contact. But treat is non-toxic and it does not work on the fungus directly. It works to develop the immunity and defense system, which is called SAR or the systemic acquired resistance and the induced resistance of a plant, which helps against the fungus naturally. Now, after application of treat, fungal will just not grow on them. It controls broad spectrum fungal diseases. We will come and we will come to know in the uh, others, uh, upcoming slides in how many diseases it has given amazing results and how quickly the results have shown. And it has a perfect balance. This formulation is a perfect balance of nutrients that help the plants recover from any fungicidal stress while making it healthy simultaneously. So it's nutrition and protection together. So this is how it works. Whenever there is a fungus pathogen and you spray tree, the salicylic acid pathway gets activated. Now this salicylic uh, uh, pathway uh, creates a hypersensitive response to the entire plant. Now, this hypersensitive response is uh, flown through the entire plant through a signal transaction pathway. And when there is the entire manifestation of the acquired resistance, 
the new leaves and the new shoots are devoid of any fungus. So if you see the mobility in the plants, if the tree is highly mobile within the plant. So if you are applying it as a foliar on the leaves, it is easily absorbed and it is transported through the floor. And if you if you apply trees a tree during drip or drench, then it is easily absorbed by the xylem and it is transported by the xylem throughout the plant. So if I just uh, you two, uh, can relate to the previous earlier slide that how it is being transferred to the signal transaction pathway to the entire part of the uh, plant. So the, sh the sugars through the xylem, through water. So it is entirely transmitted to every part of the plant. There is the signal transduction that helps in the systemic acquired resistance and the entire resistance is there in the plant. So the new leaves, the new shoots, the new fruits do not have any fungal infection or any disease manifestation rather. Coming to the dosage and application, uh, if you, the dosage, if you spray, it's 0.5 gram to one gram per liter of water, or if you judge it by acre, it's 50 to 100 grams only, which is per acre, we use almost, uh, in India, it's 150 to 200 liters of water. You see the quantity is so, so very less. And in drenching, it's one gram per liter. It can be applied to stored earlier as flowed polio, drench and drip. The results of treats, it being why it's called broad spectrum, because we've seen results in chili, in root rot, fruit rot, alternaria, damping off, tie back, powdery mildew, leaf spot, anthracnose builds. In case of tomato, we've seen in early blight, late blight, botrytis, powdery mildew. Brinjal, leaf spot, papaya, root rot and fruit spot, banana, cigatoka, one of the deadliest diseases in banana. Potato, late blight and early blight, paddy, sheath blight, blast, neck blast, brown nut, tikka leaf spot, turmeric, leaf blotch, rust, root rot, cumin, dieback and powdery mildew, also damping off, opium, damping off, maize, rust, Sugarcane, wilt, cucumber, grape, rose, watermelon, powdery mildew, and root rot. So we've seen so many uh, diseases being stopped by uh, treat. So there are some of the pictures uh, from our trials. So treat also improves seedling vigor, which was like really shocking for us to understand. But then we could understand because it has the potentiality of that antioxidant, which helps it. Uh, you know, from stress, it releases it from stress, improves its health. So we understand how its vigor, uh, its vitality is also related. So you see the control and the treated plot, the cabbage nursery on the right, which is this part, is sprayed with treat, 0.5 gram per liter. It is healthy, broad, dark green leaves, and also much heighted than this part of the seedlings. And the unsprayed ones you see has light green and shorter seedling. Coming to the next, next tomato early blight, which is caused by Alternaria salani. So here you see is the treated plot. I sprayed four times 0.5 gram per liter at 15 days interval after infection. And you see, you can clearly see the new fruits, the new leaves are devoid of any fungus. And the ones which is without spray have heavily damaged. Coming to the uh, next is the cotton leaf reddening. So here you can clearly see the reddening of this and just eight days before and after application of treat 0.5 gram per liter, just see the difference. Uh, drying of uh, and shedding of flower buds in winter. You can see how it's dried completely. And this is 15 days after treat spray. There's no flower bud drying. So healthy flowers are there. It has given amazing results on anthracnose and fruit rot disease in Chile. This is the uh, pictures before spray and just after eight to 10 days, believe me, there's no new fruits with no rot. It's so clearly distinguishable. Then you have the pepper rot, which is caused by phytophthora and crown rot as well. 
you can see the plant recovery of peat after soil drench at one gram per liter. Just see the difference. Treat reduces severity of onion uh, and the tip dieback. So onion plot in the left, sprayed with treat 0.5 gram per liter. And after 10 days, it has broad dark green leaves and less tip dieback. And the unspread control plot, which is the right, has light green leaves and more tip dieback. So the di tip dieback is so, so understandable. The difference is so understandable. Treat maximizes the root and bulb development. Just see the difference. So the nutrients are also helping in the healthy growth of the plants. Citrus gymosis, this is also caused by the Phytophthora species. This is the lime tree. Just look at the seed of the lime tree here on the right hand side, the infected one. And just after the soil drench, once one gram per liter, and after three foliar sprays, see the greenery around. See the new leaves around. It is growing so well. Then we have the tree trial on banana cigatoga. So you can see the infected part here. And on the right is the treated plot. Pre-treatment, to see the pre treatment which is heavily damaged. And this is the appearance of the youngest leaf after five weeks without any infection. This is one of the trials that is done in uh, its Philippines. So just see the difference, it's so healthy. And within just five weeks. Now there is an interesting news here. There's another adaptation of TREAT, which is also called TREAT Gold. That TREAT is from a nanotechnology and this TREAT Gold is from botanical extraction technology. It is a new formulation with a unique active ingredients from natural plant extracts. Treat gold is soluble in water. It does not get fixed in the soil easily. Therefore, it's 100% biodegradable. Treat gold, since it, the active ingredient is completely organic, it supports the beneficial symbiosis between roots and the mycorrhizal fungus. So chemical fungicides cannot differentiate between a good fungus or a bad fungus. But treat gold, since it has already organic elements in it, it does not, it supports the symbiotic relation of a mycorrhizal fungus. Also, treat gold is completely non-toxic and it prevents the growth of pathogenic fungus and other soil bone diseases by inhibiting the oxidative phosphorylation in fungal pathogen. Oxidative phosphorylation is actually the metabolic pathway of an aerobic organism. So if you stop the metabolic pathway, they cannot grow. So that is how treat gold works. Thank you so much for joining me for the FB Live session today. I hope it was a very, very important session and it was a helpful session for you all. If you need any uh, information about the products, please write back to us or you can join us in Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, leave a message in WhatsApp or definitely email us at info at geolifegroup.com. We'll see you again uh, tomorrow with a new session with a new topic. Uh, stay tuned and if you have any question please put it in your in the comment section below we'll definitely reply back to you thank you so much thank you for your time